What is going on guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another video today doing another NFL opinion video this time on Josh Gordon who has just been released by the Cleveland Browns essentially he's gonna be released on Monday and it's just coming as a shock I think to a lot of people including myself because we all know what Josh Gordon brings to the table as a football player I don't think that's even questionable uh, he broke out onto the scene out of Baylor he was a stud receiver, had an insane year, like 1,400 yards or so, uh, a bunch of touchdowns as well. He had an insane year, and then, of course, he's been suspension after suspension after suspension after appeal after he's out, you know, for so long and he's not playing, and finally, he's back. He's healthy. He's playing. He plays week one versus the Steelers a little bit as they're getting him involved after missing training camp and things like that, and um, apparently, he's going to miss this Sunday's game with a hamstring injury, but... I'm hearing it's not a hamstring injury at all. Sounds like Josh Gordon missed a meeting this morning uh, or yesterday morning or whenever this was or whenever uh, this is uploaded. And I guess they've chose to release him because he missed the meeting and it's just like one thing after the next. It doesn't really make sense to me and I'll tell you why. I'm not shocked that Josh Gordon isn't necessarily a member of the Cleveland Browns anymore. I'm shocked that they would wait this long to cut him. It wasn't during, you know, this suspension or that suspension or the next suspension or whatever it was. They wait until, you know, and even after he misses training camp, they're like, all right, we're Team Josh, Team Josh, Team Josh, and then he misses a meeting and then he gets cut. It just seems, it seems odd to me, especially considering the receiver room uh, in Cleveland. You got Jarvis Landry. You got uh, Richard Higgins. After you cut Corey Coleman, essentially, you traded him for a six-round pick. Uh, they would have cut him anyway. And then, so your receiving core is not great. Of course, Antonio Callaway. You guys know I love Antonio Callaway if you've been a subscriber to the channel for a while. And uh, if you're not, hey, hit that subscribe button. Maybe you like what you see. Uh, I will have Victorious coming up probably tomorrow. A lot of you have been asking about where that series got. I will be uploading it tomorrow and more NFL uh, news and opinions video uh, videos as they come out as it see it seems appropriate as i see fit but josh gordon it just doesn't make sense to me that you would release him now out of you know, everything that's happened and i get it john dorsey new general manager okay wants to just you know totally revamp the cleveland browns that's why a lot of players that you saw that are at least decent like nate orchard like carl nass if you saw featured on hard knocks they're not on the team anymore because if you don't play to a certain standard, it doesn't matter if you're decent. John Dorsey wants to totally revamp the Cleveland Browns, get the you know the players, the staff that he wants to be out there. He wants to succeed, and he thinks you know it's going to change the meta. Got to change everybody involved. Josh Gordon cut off the team. So I understand that from the Cleveland Browns perspective. I just don't understand why now he misses a meeting. You're going to cut him. Like what is this New England? I don't know, man. Uh, as for speculation about where Josh Gordon will end up, I have a couple of places in mind. One, I'm going to say the first jumps out to me is the Dallas Cowboys. Why Dallas Cowboys? Well, Josh Gordon went to school in Baylor in Texas. The Cowboys have shown a propensity to go after players with certain off-the-field issues. You look at Randy Gregory, for example, and there are countless more, countless more. Uh, you know, you see Dallas Cowboys players getting suspended and fined all the time. Although that it can be said for a lot of teams in the NFL nowadays, Cincinnati being a, a fan favorite for that. But Josh Gordon to the Dallas Cowboys could make a lot of sense. I think the Baltimore Ravens could be in the receiver market. I know that they do have Michael Crabtree. They do have Willie Sneed, John Brown. But they were a team that was actively pursuing receivers in the offseason. I think even though they brought in, those are three new guys. Josh Gordon could make sense for the... Uh, for the Ravens, who could definitely use another receiver. I mean, Josh Gordon is a pure number one. And if he doesn't have any off-the-field issues, he is a top receiver in this league. He's top 10, No, you know, without a doubt, no matter what. On the field, Josh Gordon's a top 10 receiver. However, he's not in my top 10 right now. He's probably not in many of your top 10s right now because he, he doesn't play. He's not on the field. And if you're going to, you know miss games over a course of a couple seasons because you can't stay off the weed as Stephen A. Smith would say the weed duh and then you're gonna miss 
you practice or you're going to be late to a meeting. It's just it's just one thing after another with Josh Gordon, and I really I don't love that. But his ability on the field is without question. He could go to the San Francisco 49ers. They're certainly in the market for a quarterback, or excuse me, wide receiver, especially with Marquise Goodwin going down for their quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo. You need weapons in there. San Fran's going to do anything. Uh, maybe Seattle. They've shown an ability to go after some of these players with off-the-field issues. Deion Jordan, for example, they brought him in, and there are more examples. They lost Doug Baldwin. Josh Gordon could fit in Seattle. There are a number of places that Josh Gordon, I think, could end up. If you guys have any ideas, let me know down in the comments section below. I, I would say pretty much when you have a pure number one like this, there's no wrong answer because his ability is not questionable. He came back even last year and was fantastic. And this year, uh, decent in game one. But I think that he will be signed this year. I think, you know, when you have a playmaker like this, he's not going to go without a team for long, even with his off-the-field stuff. That's just my opinion. You never know what's going to happen. But that will do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. Yeah, uh, let me know.